Now this quick video, I wanna talk about a heat sequencer, stack sequencer, whatever you wanna call it, and how it works, because somebody asked me about it, and in the past I may have described it in a way that gave the wrong idea, because I've described that this, between these points, this acts kinda of like the coil would on a contactor, between here and here, so you took 24 volts to one side, usually from W, and then you took common to the other side, and when that energizes this heater, then that opens and closes the contacts up top. Let's go ahead and pull it apart so we can actually see what this looks like inside and I think it'll answer a few questions about exactly what I'm talking about here. is uh, the time it takes for this bimetallic disc to snap open or close and we'll call it a snap action thermo disc or you know bimetallic disc whatever but it's actually two different dissimilar metals and they heat at different speeds and that's what allows that action to occur but you can see that without the pressure from the pins coming from that bimetallic disc, these switches actually go closed. And if you look here, I can just kind of demonstrate that. So this is the pin, this is the shorter pin, this is the bottom contact. When that disc applies that force, normally that keeps it open, and then when it snaps, it releases and allows the spring to return it. So it's actually a fairly highly rated contact. It's, you know, you can, and you can tell just by looking at the contact pads, the, the points on these, that they're pretty, you know, pretty heavy duty in comparison to what you'd see on a small relay, like a 9340 or 9380 or something like that. And that's why a sequencer can handle more current um, than a typical relay would. It's designed for that heat strip current. And because of the uh, heater, because it's a heater and not an electromagnet, there's a time delay, and that time delay comes in handy. Pins drive the contacts. I don't think it's gonna live another day. All right, thanks for watching. All right, so I missed this initially, but this is actually the thermo disc. So, and then this sits inside there. And that's the disc that actually pushes on the rods that then initially keeps them open. And then when that heats up, then it snaps in. So it, it kind of deflects bows inward. And then that allows the contacts to close. It's heat that does it, not magnetism. So it's resistive, not inductive. You can see the bow in that thing. That's what snaps in and out as it heats up and cools down.